Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach who has lost and maintained a 100 and 40 pound weight loss. It is Friday, so it is weigh-in day. We're going to talk about my week, something fun I'm doing over the weekend, my weigh-in of course, and this week's Weight Watchers workshop topic, which spoiler alert, is really, really good. So if you're excited, give this video a big huge thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed. Your bell notification is turned on because we do a weigh-in every Friday and I actually upload five videos every single week. Check out the description box down below where you will find nutrition coaching. Highly, highly recommend those personalized macros and calories. That is what I follow to lose and maintain my 140 pound weight loss, as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching for questions, accountability, or to talk with me directly. Links, discounts to my favorite things, and come join our Facebook group. It's free, it's supportive, and we would love to have you. So let's talk about my week, my weigh-in, and the Weight Watchers workshop topic. Happy Friday, friends. I hope you had an excellent week. Hopefully you had a short week with the Memorial Day holiday. I just hope overall you had a healthy, successful week. I had a pretty darn good week. On Memorial Day Monday, we went out to dinner with some friends. I actually filmed a what I eat in a day on Monday, so that went up on Wednesday. I'll link that video if you missed it. I even went to boot camp on Monday and we had a pretty intense workout. She said, oh, I didn't expect there to be a lot of people here. So then she decided to literally kill us during our workout. It was intense. I'm actually still sore today from my boot camp workout Monday and Wednesday. And then I went to boot camp this morning as well. So it has definitely been a very active week. I utilized my Copilot app and I worked out in the gym Thursday and I'll be working out in in the gym tomorrow. Now, speaking of tomorrow, Saturday, I'm pretty excited. I'm actually running a 5K tomorrow night at 7 p.m. And if you know me, 7 p.m. is when I'm in bed. I'm typically asleep between 7.30 and 8 every night. So I'm definitely napping tomorrow, but I am doing a Tucson downtown at night run. And then after the run, they open up food trucks and a beer garden. And it's just a big event and it's a nighttime 5K. Now it is already 100 degrees here during the day. So it's still going to be pretty warm at 7 p.m. But they like to do these either really early morning runs or evening runs during the summer here just so that it's not so miserably hot. So I'm actually excited about it. A little nervous that I'm going to have energy at 7 p.m. to run a 5K, but we will see how it all goes. And I'll definitely share an update in pictures with you guys in next either Wednesday's what I in a day or next Friday's weigh-in. So that's going to be exciting and I'm actually going to be getting in two workouts on Saturday. So my gym workout with Copilot and then the nighttime run. And then I will absolutely be taking a rest day on Sunday. Lola had her chemotherapy on Tuesday. It's a pretty rough treatment for her. So she hasn't been feeling the best the last couple of days, but at least she gets to have a week off before the next one. So allowing her to feel really good again. Poor Lola. She goes through these days after her chemotherapy where she just doesn't feel very good. And by the time she starts to feel good again, it's time for another treatment. So I very much appreciate the week off in between the four cycle treatments. A lot of you have been asking since she's in remission why she still has to go to chemo. She does have to finish out the entire five to six months of chemo in order for her to stay in remission. If we stopped chemotherapy treatment, she would just go right back out of remission. So our goal is to continue to kill off in any cancer cells that are still in her body and any new cancer cells that may enter her body while she continues the full round of chemotherapy treatment. I will say that this second round has definitely been a little bit harder on her. I'm noticing more diarrhea, a little bit more digestive distress for her. And I'm sure her body is just having a harder time with a second round of chemo. But overall, she's thriving. She's doing really, really well. She, like I said, she has those few days where she doesn't feel very good post-treatment. And then she's back to her normal happy self. And again, she's in full remission, which I can't tell you how grateful I am. I am in a canine lymphoma cancer support group on Facebook, and it makes me cry every day. And Troy's always like, get out of the group. But I just can't. I want to be there to support other moms, dog moms and dog dads, cat moms and cat dads going through cancer. I want to be there to support them, but it's so sad for me to see. And it just makes me more and more grateful on how well Lola's doing because she's my best friend in the whole world. And I, I can't imagine my life without her. And as long as she's healthy and happy, I will go to the end of the earth to keep it that way for her. So like I said, it's been a little bit harder this round for her, but overall she is still doing really well and she is still in full remission 
thank goodness. Also this last Saturday, Troy and I did more of our spring cleaning. We actually cleaned the inside and outside of our windows in our entire house. Let me tell you, that took forever. I was thinking a couple hours, no. It took us almost five hours, the two of us, to clean all of the windows and they were so dirty on the outside, so dirty on the inside. When I would wipe the inside window, my paper towel would literally be black. It was disgusting. I had to clean all the insides of my windows two or three times to get them actually clean. I was exhausted by the end of it. I actually worked out Saturday morning at the gym with my co-pilot app and then cleaned all the windows. So this weekend, the last little bit of our spring cleaning is the molding. So I want to wipe down all of the molding in my house. I always dust it, you know, dust off the top of the molding, but I actually want to wipe it all down and then we'll be done with this big bout of yearly spring cleaning. We are very clean people in general. So our house is clean and organized and put together, but it's that deep down cleaning that isn't surface that I like to do at least once a year. So our windows look amazing. We have a whole new outlook on life, but that was a lot, a lot. And Troy even wiped down all of our patio furniture and sprayed everything off on our patio. It was just an intense day. He was struggling with his legs. It was a lot for him. I was even tired. My legs were tired. I even took a Tylenol before I went to bed. So it was a lot, but we're feeling really good and really accomplished that the spring cleaning is just about done. The last little bit of it I will do this weekend. I just finished out week five of my eight week cut. So three more weeks to go and then I will be done with this cut back to my maintenance calories, back to living my best life. Actually, this week wasn't too terrible on my cut. I felt pretty good and satisfied with the foods that I ate. I still was able to eat out a couple of times this last week and stay within my calorie deficit. That's what I love about counting calories and protein is I can really eat whatever I want. It just has to work into my day. And I really felt like I nailed it this last week with my nutrition. Like I said last week, I've been really focused on water. Again, this week, just aiming for that at least 80 to 100 ounces of water every single day. So overall, my week was really, really good and I'm excited to see what week six of my cut brings. Before I share with you my my way in, let's talk about this week's Weight Watchers workshop topic. And like I said, this is a really good one. Are the people in your life helping or hurting your progress? As a weight loss and nutrition coach, I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching and I get asked this question a lot. How do I navigate people in my life who don't benefit my weight loss journey? How do I keep them in my life but still reach my goals? And how do I know if someone's helping or hurting me on my journey? So this topic, is really important and something each and every one of us needs to know about. This could be family, friends, coworkers, and even strangers you follow on social media. Are they helping or hurting your weight loss journey? So list the people you talk to, listen to, read, or see more often. This could be people like family, friends, coworkers, podcasters, news anchors, TV hosts, social media accounts, bloggers, and writers. Number two, explore your top few. Think about their tone, messaging, and how they make you feel, especially about your journey. And then categorize them based on whether they help you reach your goals or not. Who could you connect with more? The IG influencer who shares real life's ups and downs of weight loss. The coworker who gets you to walk during your lunch break. And who could you interact with less? The friend who constantly talks about trendy crash diets, or the podcaster who stresses you out about your health. And number four, it's time to recalibrate. Can someone on your more list replace time with someone on the less list? Or can you find someone new to come and swap in? Maybe invite your coworker to try a workout instead of the diet obsessed friend, or listen to a new podcast recommended by your favorite IG influencer. And number five, plan exactly what you'll do, when and where and how you'll make it happen. It's really easy to get in a routine of hanging out with the same people, whether they benefit our weight loss journey or not. I will tell you from personal experience, finding friends especially or workout groups or classes of like-minded people really can help you on your journey. You have the same thing in common. You have the same end goal. You can lean on them for support. They can be the person who does the exercise or activity with you, the one who you meal plan with or grocery shop with. Having someone like-minded on the same journey as you, like I said, is very, very beneficial. And limiting the time with people who don't help you on your weight loss journey. Maybe the friends or family who are constantly pushing food on you or constantly telling you that you've lost too much weight or you need to lose weight. Limiting time with those people and if possible, removing them from your life can be really, really helpful when it comes to reaching your goals. I also think social media this day and age is 
absolutely essential for support. And also you need to clean your feet out and get rid of the people who don't support you, make you feel less than, or maybe offer diet culture advice or push, don't eat this, don't eat this, don't eat this, eat this, eat this, eat this. Those are the types of people that you want to remove from your feed and focus on people that support you and motivate you. I certainly hope that I am someone that brings positivity to your weight loss journey, someone who motivates you, supports you. I am always here to help you. My inbox is always open. I offer nutrition coaching, one-on-one -on -one support for you. I hope that people like me are the ones that are in your feed and then the people who bring you down are the ones you simply remove from your feed. You have full control over who you follow on social media. Take a step back and really notice who benefits you and who doesn't and clean up your life and clean up your social media feed. You want people who are riding shotgun on your journey, not the people in the backseat. I really like this topic. Like I said, it's something each and every one of us needs to think about, reevaluate, and implement into our life. Now let's talk about my weigh in for the week. Like I said, I just ended week five of my cut. I have three more weeks to go until I'm back to maintenance. Like I said, this week went really well. I got in all my movement, focused on my water, wasn't as miserable in my cut as I was the week before. My body has leveled out. I've finished my cycle. I've went through my ovulation. This is kind of the good week for me when it comes to my overall hunger, my weight loss. And when I stepped on the scale today, it was enough, it was definitely my good week of the month. I was down 0.6 pounds. So in the last couple weeks, I've lost an entire pound on my weight loss cut, which is incredible. Not something I expected to happen truthfully. I really wanted to focus on, like I said, leaning down, recomping my body, just building those healthy habits to take into when I go in to take with me back into maintenance. So I am thrilled with a 0.6 loss and the loss of an entire pound on the scale over the last couple of weeks. I'm still noticing some pretty major changes in my body in a very good way. And I'm so excited to share with you at the end of my cut pictures, measurements, weight loss over the cut. And then, like I said, I'm excited to get right back into my maintenance calories, being able to eat more, have a little bit more flexibility, but I'm really proud of my week. I'm proud of my week overall. And I'm going to take that as motivation and excitement for week six of my cut. I want to hear from you guys. I want to know what do you do with people in your life who don't serve you well on your weight loss journey? And let us know down below some, who are some of your favorite people to follow for weight loss, whether it's on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, let us know down in the comments. And of course, how was your week? How was your weigh-in? Let me know everything down below. And if you enjoyed another weigh-in, give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not, turn your bell on, because again, we do a weigh-in every Friday and I upload five videos every single week. Don't forget to check out the description box down below for nutrition coaching, links and discounts to my favorite things, and come join our free Facebook group. It's supportive and we would love to have you. Happy, happy, happy Friday, happy weekend, and I'll see you in tomorrow's grocery haul. Bye!